So uh, thanks a lot and welcome to the workshop. So I'm uh, happy to introduce uh, Professor P. R. Naren to you. Uh, he is an associate uh, professor of Chemical Engineering Department, School of Chemical and uh, Biotechnology of Sastra Deem to Be University. And uh, sir, over to you. We can begin the session now. Yeah. Good morning, uh, and I'm happy to meet uh, so many students, uh, so many interested participants uh, for a three-day workshop and open forum. Uh, I also thank uh, the opportunity uh, of FOSI. I mean, not only for this workshop, we have a long interaction with the FOSI team, and I should openly admit it is through FOSI. Uh, I had first started using Scilab uh, when I joined uh, Shastra, and ever since uh, from there, uh, I think there's no turning back. So from Scilab, it went to DWSIM, then Open Modelica, and then Open Form. So it's almost like uh, uh, my journey at Shastra has been continuously along with also FOSI team, and I'm also happy that uh, many of my students have got eventually benefited uh, in their career uh, because of learning this open source tool. So this why I'm telling is not just for gratitude, but all the participants were there are like about 138 now. Uh, if you have any doubt that whether uh, this free and open source uh, tool will build your career, you can take it for granted. Yes, it does build. If you put in the right efforts, if you sustain your efforts, if you really learn well, and if you can, yeah, if you can demonstrate your learning, certainly it uh, helps in a career. I, I can give specific examples where somebody have learned the free and open source tool, uh, got admission for their master's or in their PhD, they were specifically asked whether you know this tool and given evidence and they have given an evidence of textbook companion project. So I'm not sure whether those were stored, but I think maybe in the valediction session, I think uh, you can get it clarified from the uh, FOSI team on the textbook companion. Uh, uh, Payal, was that told uh, in the first session? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, they have got a general introduction of um, what we do, but uh, to today after the session ends, I mean, after all the talk ends, I'll go into the details yeah. of uh, participation and uh, how can they participate in, in our project and how can they get yes. involved and there with are also specific examples where I can say with respect to open form where one of my student was asked right show how he knows open form and by knowing open form he got a very good opportunity in terms of his PhD and not only this is in research and PhD there are also cases where people have got industrial jobs because they know uh, let's like say open modelica so take it for granted uh, knowing uh, free and open source, becoming yourself expertise in a free and open source is certainly going to make uh, a way for a very good uh, career. Now, with this uh, gratitude note to the entire uh, FOSI team, I wish to begin this lecture. We will make this a more interactive one. Uh, now, I hope uh, you have seen the link that I have put in the chat window. If you have not joined, you can clearly join the uh, the Mentimeter. And in your screen, you must be seeing now a thumbs up icon and which you have to click. Now, if we can see now, there are about 58 uh, people who have clicked it. So we have about 145 people in the uh, Zoom, but I think about 64, 68. Now you can see in the lower bottom of the screen, which I'm sharing in the uh, Zoom, you can see the count. So I'll just wait till this number reach something around about 100 so that we can carry on. So those who are on mobile, uh, you can prefer to use the app, which might be very uh, uh, easier to use. And if you're joining the Zoom on a laptop, then I think just on a, another browser tab, you can open it. Okay, so we will just go to the next uh, uh, slide in this. Now, you will see it question. I have just asked, what is your affiliation? I just want you to pick a choice based on your affiliation, whether you are a current undergraduate student or a postgraduate, or if you're industry or any other uh, entrepreneur. So that's the last option. So this is just fairly to know the audience to whom I should talk. So I, I should be knowing a fair knowledge of uh, the community in which I'm going to address. So we have about uh, more postgraduate uh, 
participants. So that's nice. So eventually, that means uh, this session is going to be more of uh, very comfortable for me. Yeah, no option for research scholar. Probably you can put industry and others. So sorry, I didn't think uh, that there was also a research scholar. So maybe you can put on industry and others. Sorry, I think uh, that is uh, from one Mr. Baruti Prasanna. Industry and others, I will just take it as also as industry and research scholars. Whoever is not there in the other options. So fairly, there are also second year uh, students who have shown interest. Like we have about 13 second year students and uh, about 11 third year students and quite a number of postgraduate students. So that's fairly nice. Uh, that makes also the session uh, going to be more lighter for me. Okay. So we will go. So now you got an idea of how to operate on the Mentimeter, right? And you understood what is uh, the Mentimeter. Your name was never captured, right? So when, when you responded, uh, uh, your name was never captured in the Mentimeter. That means eventually I do not know who is putting it. So it's only you will know what choice you have put. So in a way, so I hope this will break your stigma of asking questions. You don't need to worry what questions you are asking or who, what options you are choosing. As long as uh, you choose it appropriately to your concerns, it's fine. So there are still about 156 participants, but uh, I think uh, uh, we have got only 87. So I'm not sure there is any issue for the other participants. Nevertheless, I'm just again uh, posting the message in the Zoom. Uh, this is for our other uh, participants who are able to join. So I have posted the message in the Zoom chat window. You will see a link or you can go to menti.com and use that numeric code, which you see on the screen, 89078131. There is a question that might appear. It will ask your affiliation. I agree the research scholar option I missed in the choices. So if you are a research scholar, you can probably put in uh, industry and others. So of the 160 participants in the Zoom, um, so we have got about now uh, one or seven. So that's nice. So I'm proceeding further, assuming that we have majority of them as research scholars and postgraduates. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, a bunch of uh, students are also there from second years. So that means the tone of the talk, the talk, so it, I have to keep it at the postgraduate level. I will still be very uh, mindful of the undergraduate population that is there uh, in the talk and uh, pace the talk appropriately. So the next question is just, I just want to know which field you are from. Now I have listed four, but uh, you could be from other field also. So if you are from other field, you can just put there. Now, when I say chemical engineering, it is all chemical technology related to chemical engineering. Similarly, mechanical is mechatronics, mechanical engineering, metallurgy, production, all related field could be in mechanical itself. So these are like broad domains and not necessarily your degree. So it could be mechanical production, manufacturing, metallurgy, all I've clubbed in one. Chemical engineering, chemical technology, petroleum, petrochemical, all clubbed in chemical. Then you had civil, Others is other branches. So predominantly we have, then that means it, it, it is very clear we have people from mechanical. So that's nice. So fairly now I have understood the audience uh, to whom I'm talking to. Okay. Now you will now see a question where you have to enter a phrase uh, or a sentence. Right. Now I will hide the results from the Zoom. So first let you enter because I don't want you to read somebody's uh, text and then enter. Uh, you can enter what is something that you think you have learned. And like say you are confident. You can enter multiple times also. Multiple entries are allowed uh, in this uh, option. So you can do enter multiple times. I'll wait for a minute. Uh, I think they can unmute and uh, respond, right, Professor Narin? Uh, 
Uh, no, they are actually texting it. I have actually okay. hidden it. So okay. I don't want okay, to okay. Actually, yeah, that's why one person was asking how should I respond. <laughs> oh, okay. So you should click on that link and in the link they should respond. If you see in the Zoom meet, you will see there are 64 people who have responded. So let me just unhide the results. Now you can see what people have texted. So Blender they have learned. Right. Was Blender yesterday, yes, yesterday we had a session on uh, uh, GUI for open form block. Okay. So our team member Asdeep Adak uh, took the session. That's why uh, they know this. Good. Laminar and turbulent flow, equation, discretization, fantastic. Different types of meshing, running and open form. So that's good. Right. So this is just for me to warm up so that uh, you are interacting and you are not only uh, looking at the screen. Right. So nice. So the next is something little... Uh, you need to think and put uh, what is your proficiency in these things. So on the right hand side is, uh, I mean, one choice is uh, that you know it very well. Right. Let me just hide the results. Okay. Let us have people and then uh, we can put. So 13 people have entered actually now. Okay, there are about 90 people. So uh, now you can see the uh, what is the average the people have responded. Okay, so I I should appreciate fairly everybody have learned and, and because we have a very good postgraduate population and I think all these are then eventually easy. And it's very surprising for me to know that, uh, you know, more of the derivation of the navier stroke than of the energy balance equation at any given day i would probably say that i know energy balance equation derivation very well uh, than a navier stroke so this means really the credit goes to the session handled by the navier stroke equation in this open form which means you have learned right so that is actually one success uh, i should attribute to the fossi team because that clearly reflects the people know now continuity and Navier-Stokes equation much better than the scalar equation, which is an energy balance uh, equation. That's that's nice. And I'm happy to see that most of you know what is the Eulerian and Lagrangian uh, approaches also. So that's nice. Okay. So the next is something that, uh, sorry, just it's not the pause. Yeah. What should I talk in this session, remember this session is on heat transfer. So this session is on heat transfer. So if you are asked to suggest a topic to me in heat transfer, what you would like to suggest in heat transfer. So let us restrict to at least the domain of heat transfer within heat transfer. What do you think I should be talking about uh, for the next half an hour or so? I'm just uh, Showing the results, convection, customization, convection, how to incorporate heat transfer, smooth horizontal pipe, discretization of heat transfer, equation of lumped heat transfer, convective, good energy equation, LMTD heat exchangers. Good. So, fairly many people have uh, written something which I had, I should say that I had thought of uh, before coming uh, to this talk. So, that's nice. With this, we'll go ahead. Uh, we are almost close to 10.30, so I think we should start now a good business. So this is pass uh, to open form. What I mean by pass to open form means now I will change the screen and I'll come back. Uh, I'll stop sharing the screen and I will share the screen uh, which I'm going to use now. Now, what we will do is, as like as people are uh, hinted, we will see about the equations pertaining to heat transfer. Rather, I should say that we will see the equation pertaining to energy. Energy balance in CFD. Okay, how is energy balance is being done in CFD? So with this, let us go. Now, what we know uh, as of now in CFD is, CFD is all about solving flow 
primarily it only solves flow but we don't have only flow along with flow we need to solve for energy so this flow is nothing but momentum right now why we solve this momentum equation because we want to get the velocity pattern right we want to get the velocity pattern if you ask the question why we need to get the velocity pattern because this velocity pattern affects the performance performance typically that means we will say as engineering characteristics engineering characteristics of that particular equipment now the equipment that uh, uh, we are talking of could be a, a heat exchanger let's say if it is a heat transfer it could be an evaporator it could be a reactor it could be a turbine right so this is heat transfer of an equipment equipment that is used in a process now it's not only this velocity pattern this velocity pattern also has an effect it also has an effect or rather this energy will also have the temperature distribution also has an effect on this velocity pattern and that is why it is not about only solving flow it is also about solving energy the other equation which we solve in tip cfb is the species which we actually call as mass balance now this is different from uh, the continuity equation the continuity equation is something that we call as overall mass balance all right all of these and there is no choice over and above this continuity equation has to be solved so there is no choice in this this is must this is must these two are optional these two are optional it is not in all the cft problems you will solve energy and species now here you might uh, have a doubt if you take a typical uh, textbook problem on heat transfer let's take a typical textbook problem on heat transfer which will be like a slab this would be a slab the slab so that means this is a solid slab this is a solid slab and they will typically tell that this end is kept at a cold uh, point so the cold point could be 30 degrees because 30 degrees is cold with respect to an another surface and this could be at like say 80 degrees now what is the temperature distribution in this solid uh, tab now can we solve this can we solve this in cfd if you ask this question can you solve this in a cfd tool can i solve in cfd tool the answer is s right it is not whether you can solve or not in cfd tool but if i reverse the question slightly is it something necessarily a problem of cfd no if if i ask something like that then it is not it is solvable in a cfd tool why it is solvable in a cfd tool because already we have seen that energy equation is there in the tool so you can solve but if i ask the question just because it is there in the tool is will this become a cfd problem no typically cfd problem means it should solve the flow it should have the velocity pattern capture over and beyond capturing the velocity pattern if it also captures the temperature pattern and the species pattern that is an added goal uh, in the problem statement pure conduction this is pure conduction right or rather in cfd terminology this is called as pure diffusion pure diffusion problem you necessarily don't require cfd as a tool because these have clear analytical solutions or they can be easily solved by a mathematical tool as well i mean by writing codes also 
So before even going to uh, CFD, if I ask me what context I'm now going to look when I say I'm solving heat transfer is I have a flow. There is certainly a flow. Along with flow, there should be now energy. So this is the context I'm looking into, right? This is the context uh, I'm looking into. So somebody has asked engineering uh, KTCS, uh, what is the shortcut you have used? Characteristics. Okay. So that is not characteristics. I think the, that is, uh, I think it is characteristics you are talking, right? Okay. Now what I mean by, I'll just answer that question and then we will proceed. Uh, right. What I meant is engineering. characteristics, which means, let's say, for example, your heat transfer coefficient. This is one characteristics. This is like a global characteristics, which you require because this will affect the heat transfer area. And this heat transfer area is what you are expected to design. When you say you design an equipment, you are actually arriving at the value of a heat transfer area. It is not directly that area that is important. Through this area, you are actually going to get the dimension. It could be length, breadth, height, diameter, or anything else, configuration and whatever it is. All these dimensions particularly is important depending on which kind of equipment you have. It is a shell and tube, tray, or something else. So this is one an engineering parameter or an engineering, I would say parameter. And this parameter eventually is governed by how you solve. And this is what is important in design. And that, that is linked to also the velocity pattern. Now, because it is heat transfer, I'm talking about heat transfer characteristics, but it is not only heat transfer. Like say, for example, if uh, uh, you might have seen terms, something like conversion, yield, right, efficiency. Now, efficiency could be energy efficiency, right? All these are parameters which is required, right, which are required uh, to be not designed. I mean, you need a certain value for a certain application or you might be looking for a certain range of values uh, as part of your process. Now, how will you arrive at these values? There are design procedures. Now, if you ask to actually calculate the heat transfer coefficient, are you doing CFT? If you ask the question, it is no, right? So that means, for example, I think many of you would know how to calculate shell and tube heat exchanger, right? Where the heat transfer rate is given as overall heat transfer coefficient times area times uh, the temperature gradient. And this is linked to uh, the diameter, the length, and the number of tubes, and so on, which is a configuration of the heat transfer uh, equipment. In this case, cell and tube. Are you by doing CFD and arriving this? If you ask this question, no. That's a simple no, right? We don't use CFD to arrive at this. But now the question is not that. One assumption that we make in shell and tube, let's say, for example, if these are two tubes, I'm just taking two tubes in a shell, right? I'm taking only two tubes in a shell, right? I'm not at all drawing the other parts. I'm just making it a very gross diagram. Now you are assuming the fluid equally splits in both and then comes out uh, equally from both. Is this assumption valid? If you ask now this question, is this assumption valid? You are assuming the temperature drop in both the tubes are same. Let's say, for example, if you send it at, let's say, uh, 30 degree and you are heating it something, if this comes to 80 degree Celsius, you are assuming this 30 degree also will come to 80 degree Celsius. This is what you do when you are doing uh, the conventional heat transfer calculation. But 
is this assumption valid right i am not questioning the method but can you assume this if if i take number of tubes to be 40 if i like say i have 150 tubes so on and so forth will you still think that this is going to same probably now you will start thinking no there might be some variation now just think if there is some variation will not the tubes now bend differently because there is a thermal stress uh, uh, with respect to the tubes and the tubes will bend what if the first tubes bend like this right and the second tube bend like this right then your heat exchanger will break is it clear so that means you need to assess you have calculated still uh, the heat transfer area but the performance of that equipment needs to be not only judged by that parameter it is also judged by whether all the tubes in the heat transfer equipment are working perfectly now this is assessed by trial and error also or by periodic check also so before cfd if you ask me like say some hundred years before how people were doing people were actually checking people would used to check for every week there are systems where people used to check for every month and every month they have to change the heat transfer tubes due to corrosion bending and whatever it is now we have techniques now we know to a priori assess right now that is facilitated by actually solving and then seeing whether the temperature distribution is same so i hope uh, i have made some impact i mean some clarification on why is this engineering characteristics uh, is all important now let me go to uh, the rigorous equation now all the transport equation what we call as transport equation in cfd it is a transport of a quantity let us assume that it is transport of a quantity the quantity can be either mass or momentum or energy and we are uh, we follow phenomenological model that means we will conserve we will conserve this quantity we have to preserve this quantity this quantity cannot be lost right that is the very fundamental so what is the equation that we have whether it is mass or energy we can say is whatever is going in in a control volume so i am taking a control volume so i am not going to talk on why control volume approach or what is a control mass approach or something i am directly assuming that there is a fair understanding now among all the participants who are here on a control volume and remember this control volume it could be a tank and this control volume could be a very very small push fixtures which is here so if you integrate the control volume you will get this tank okay we are writing on a fixtures very very small volume on an equipment this control volume can be as part of a tube also so this means on a pipe flow this small part can be this control volume it can be on a part of heat exchangers also so if you have a heat exchanger and uh, let's say the shell and tube heat exchanger suppose if you have this control volume could be something over here it could be anywhere here or here it is only when you integrate this control volume you get the equipment right so that's that's our understanding so let us uh, so all equations on in cfd can be written as in plus generation is equal to out plus consumption plus accumulation this is the equation for all right this is the equation for all all the equa uh, for all the three equations the only difference is when you talk about continuity you will not have uh, the generation and consumption term so now we have to talk about what is the in and out in terms of energy how the fluid energy how the energy comes in or goes out in a control volume how the energy comes inside the control volume and goes outside the control volume 
Now, the energy can come in and go out in two ways. Now, I'm not doing the complete derivation. I'm just giving the snapshot for you to understand the equation. One, it can come by flow. Another, it can come by diffusion. What do you mean by it can come by flow? Because the fluid is flowing, because there is a mass flow rate, and this mass flow rate is associated with an energy that we call a specific enthalpy, H. Every matter is associated with energy. Now, if a mass is coming in, then uh, the enthalpy associated with that mass can also come in. Now, what is diffusion? Diffusion is without motion. So, this is something that we call as convection. Or rather, in CFD language, we should call this as advection. Because if you ask strict fluid uh, physics people, they will call about advection. And they will say convection as sum of advection and diffusion. Advection is of motion. Advection is what? Is because of motion. It is what? It because of velocity. Okay, rather. Flow. Now, now. So that means uh, how to write convection. So we know that convection can be written in terms of mass flow rate. So this is always rate. You should remember everything is rate. So rate means quantity, any quantity per unit time. And what quantity we are focusing now? We are focusing on energy rate. So that means energy rate, which I put as E dot. If I write in SI unit, it will become joules per second right joules per second so if i know mass flow rate and if i multiply that with the specific enthalpy and i will get this energy rate for example if this is the mass flow rate at inlet multiply it by its specific enthalpy now mass flow rate let's say in si unit is kgs per second its specific enthalpy is joules per kg eventually you will get joules per second which is the rate at which uh, the energy flows in. Here we are uh, considering only the enthalpy form of energy. We are not considering uh, the kinetic and the other forms of energy. Similarly, the out also. Out can also have diffusion and out can also have, it is not only in, but both in and out can have uh, uh, energy leaving it because of uh, flow happening and flow going out. Now, what about diffusion? Diffusion is something, diffusion mode of energy transfer. Now, this is what we call it as conduction, where we do not really require the fluid to flow, but it is actually the the, the sub-molecular or the molecular means of transporting a quantity. So this is how, uh, I mean, like typically you tell an example, if you just stand near a hot place, you don't need the fluid to flow towards you. You can just feel the hotness just because of conduction, because the molecules hit uh, you and in the molecules hitting you, it conveys the energy. Now, how is a conductional mode of energy rate is given? This is what is given by the, the transport loss that you might have studied. For example, for energy transfer, it is the Fourier's law, right? The Fourier's law of heat conduction. That primarily tells the diffusional mode of transfer. So here again, the energy rate, or you can also write that as Q, is equal to a diffusion coefficient times a gradient of temperature right any any transport law can be written like this but this is a very generic way of writing what is the form in which that you know you know it is lambda times gradient lambda is what you call as thermal conductivity you can we can also write it in another form which is like lambda times rho cp and times del of rho cpt eventually if you write in this form this term is called thermal diffusivity like how you have momentum diffusivity this is also called thermal diffusivity 
So now you know that in and out can be written in terms of either convection or diffusion. Now let's come about uh, generation. Generation or consumption. Now they are almost equal to one another just with a sign. So if you put plus sign, it let's say become generation. If you put minus sign, let's say becomes the consumption or the loss. Or the loss. One is by heat transfer. Right. So that means from one system to another or one control volume to another control volume, the transfer tank click phase. This is nothing but heat exchange. And it is for this heat exchange we know the equation Q is equal to H A delta T, right? Heat transfer coefficient times uh, the area of contact between the two systems times the temperature, right? There's an another way of uh, another means also by which this generation and consumption can happen. That is because of reaction. If you think of uh, a combustion chamber, if you think of engine, uh, coal combustion, there is a reaction happening. And by virtue of reaction, there can be a generation of heat or there can be a quenching of heat. There can be quenching of energy or there can be generation of the enthalpy. That can also be written. Now, this is usually written as how much energy change, how much enthalpy change is produced, is resulted per unit of the reaction, uh, per quantum of the mass that is getting reacted times how much is your reaction taking place. So the quantum of reaction times how much the enthalpy associated with this reaction is what is this heat exchange. This is primarily heat exchange. If you have this system, how much heat loss is there through the surface of the system to an another system which is around it. I mean, there's nothing like called a system and a surrounding, rather uh, a surrounding is also uh, an equally a thermodynamic system. So that is something that you need to know. There's nothing like system and surrounding is something different. Surrounding is an, another thermodynamic system. The system is something that you focus on which you write the equation, but the surrounding is something in another system for which also the same thermodynamic loss uh, or value. Now, I, I should actually thank, uh, I mean, if I am not sure if how many of you have heard the thermodynamic lectures of Professor Sukatme, again from IIT Bombay, it is available in YouTube and also as part of, uh, uh, I think, the NME ICT initiative. So you can go back and look into the lecture where he would have explained very clearly the ideologies of uh, uh, the first law, the second law the th uh, of thermodynamics and how heat uh, has to be uh, conceptualized. Okay, so now let us just write what is the final equation would look like. So we said in plus generation will be equal to out plus loss plus accumulation. Now all this with respect to a control volume in which the fluid is flowing. Right, so you have a specific mass flow rate of fluid that is going in. So that means you have some velocity UVW of the fluid that is going in. Here again, the mass flow rate will be same, but the UVW will be still different. There could be some heat loss, okay, or the heat gain. It could be this side arrow or the other side arrow, whatever it is. And if there is a reaction, then there could be a reaction also occurring within this control volume. All these are a contact. All these are uh, for a very general case. Now, if this is the case, you will end up in an equation which you clearly know now, or you might have seen in books as in will come because of the flow. I think I will avoid writing the differential equation uh, for want of time. I will just write first, uh, yeah. So because of flow times enthalpy, this is the inlet that is happening because of advection plus whatever 
is the flux that will happen because of diffusion. Now, I am not putting the directional coordinates here. It can be x, y, or z. So this could be dx, dy, or dz. So this is because of diffusion. This is again in. Plus, you can have either the uh, generation, the transfer within the system, into the system, or out of the system. So you can have here h, a, an area times. Here you can have a delta t, which is actually the heat transfer. So this could be generation or this could be loss. I mean, generation in terms, it may be gain depending on whether it is plus or minus. Again, you have m dot h, which is out, which is actually the advection out. Plus again, a diffusion. This could be again dx, uh, dy or dz, depending on how you take diffusion plus an accumulation term. This is d by dt of rho c d t. This is primarily or again how much enthalpy is stored in the system. How much enthalpy is stored in the system. This is where the equation starts. And if you see the final, uh, if you go back and see the book, see the other steps of derivation, you will see the final equation would end up something like this. So it is this term that's coming like this. The mass flow rate term is what is coming as rho into u uh, minus, or uh, let's say plus, this could be plus or minus. This is again dt by dx. I am writing only with respect to one coordinate, but uh, this could be actually a partial differential equation if you write it in all the, the three coordinates, right? equal to minus, this is uh, the thermal conductivity times dt by dx. Again, this I'm writing with respect to x, and it could be with respect to any of the coordinates. And uh, if it is all, then it would be like uh, a partial equation, plus d by dt of rho cpt. This is actually uh, this enthalpy term. So this talks about the net advective energy flow. This is the net diffusional energy flow, right? This is for conductive heat transfer, right? This is accumulation and this is heat exchange. Now let's take, uh, uh, I will take another five minutes just to give a prelude. Like say, if you want to solve for a flow through pipe in a heat transfer, what you should do so that you can practice. Let us assume that I'll take a very simple case of a fluid flowing through a circular cross section pipe. So this is a circular uh, cross section pipe. So you know the diameter, let us assume that you know the length. So this is known, diameter is known. There's a fluid, now you can take it as water flowing or you can take it as air flowing. I mean, you can make it as either a constant density system or an incompressible system based on the fluid that you take. So the fluid is flowing in. I hope now you know how to simulate. If, what I mean by how to simulate is, suppose if you give here a flat velocity profile, a uniform velocity profile, and if your condition is such that, that uh, towards the end, you might generate either a laminar flow through profile, or it could be a case where you will generate a turbulent flow through profile. It's not laminar will go to turbulent. Please don't take it like that way. It is like, depending on the condition, whether your Reynolds number is in the laminar regime or it is in the turbulent regime for a flow through pipe. So for a flow through pipe, it is roughly about 2,100 is laminar and turbulent is, you have to be little more than 10,000, right? The in-between is like a intermediate regime. Now you can generate this. 
Now, in the same problem, all we have to see is what will happen if there is a heat transfer. What will happen if there is a heat transfer through the walls? So that means we are more specific about what is the wall boundary condition. Right. Now, why we are worried about boundary condition? Because you should know that all our uh, transport equation, all our transport equation, they are a differential. We have written in Eulerian control volume approach. So you will end up as a differential equation. Now, to solve differential equation, you need a boundary condition. Like for example, if it is a first order equation, then you require one boundary condition. If it is like a second order equation, you require two boundary conditions for that variable, right? Only then you can solve. So that is what we are talking. And what I mean by solving it, we are actually trying to integrate this equation so that we will generate back the actual equipment. We will generate back the actual system. So you might have seen you or heard in your previous lectures, what it means by no slip, free slip, boundary conditions, which are all for solving the momentum balance equation. Now I'm going to take you and then tell about uh, what is the specific boundary condition that you will use it uh, for your uh, energy transfer. Primarily, what is the first type that is actually the adiabatic wall. What do you mean by adiabatic wall? So if, if the surface is adiabatic, the fluid can go through it, but then, but then this energy transfer is not possible. So that means no energy transfer. So when I say no energy transfer, which means Q is zero, but Q is zero, you need to think of two terms. It can be either because of flow or it can be either because of diffusion. But in wall, you always don't have flow, right? There is no flow across the wall. So this you need not worry because in any case, there is no flow across wall. Because if the if mass flow rate in the normal direction to the wall itself is zero, there is no way that the energy will get left. So the only thing that you have to now worry is about the diffusional transfer. So what is the a diffusional transport equation. Now you should remember that is actually a Fourier's law, which is based on the gradient, right? Which is based on the gradient. So when you make, when you want to make the wall as adiabatic, it means you are making the gradient as zero. The gradient of temperature across the surface across the wall surface is zero. So that means on the normal direction to wall, right? On the normal direction to wall, dt by dn. This dn stands for, I'm telling about normal direction to wall. If this is your wall, that means in this direction, dt should be equal to zero, right? There is no transfer allowed, permitted, right? So we can write adiabatic wall either by writing the uh, heat transfer rate as zero, or we can specifically clearly write it as the temperature gradient being zero. Why we are not worried about the flow? Because we know that anyways, flow is zero across the wall. What is the next known uh, condition in heat transfer? So that is an isothermal wall. Now that is fairly easy. So if you have a system where there's a flow is happening and now I'm saying this surface is isothermal. What I mean by that this surface is isothermal, that means the temperature of the surface is fixed. So that means to specify something as isothermal wall, this should be a known constant. You should prefix this to a known value. That is what it means by isothermal. It's fairly a constant. I mean, fairly simple. 
The third one is diathermic wall or what what's called as with heat exchange or you can also uh, very simply know it as it is a non adiabatic surface that means you have a control volume on which there is a flow happening but then you are saying that there is also a heat transfer happening but that does not mean the temperature of this wall is fixed this temperature of this wall is not fixed so that means it is neither isothermal nor it is adiabatic but then it is allowing some heat exchange if this is the case then for that wall surface you need to specify this uh, heat transfer rate or the heat exchange rate now in cfd specifically in cfd these two you don't need to specify because one area is from geometry it is automatically known because you are discretizing you are drawing the geometry and everything so it knows this this delta t it will compute right so this delta t uh, is what uh, the system can compute uh, based on what is there in the system profile and uh, uh, what is the temperature that is given outside but this heat transfer coefficient is something that we need to provide now you cannot be without providing this heat transfer coefficient this heat transfer coefficient is something that we have to provide so that means essentially you have uh, three boundary condition one is adiabatic isothermal and another is diathermic so in adiabatic the heat flux or the gradient is specified as zero in isothermal the wall temperature has to be specified whereas in a diathermic or in a in a surface with heat exchange we have to actually specify the heat transfer coefficient okay um so any other question so i think i'll stop here i i do know that we didn't do elaborate derivation but that's fine i think in one hour we we have to just understand appreciate what is the uh, problem that we are going to probably do and what is heat transfer i think one in one hour uh, i i hope fair amount of understanding you have got any any other question in buoyancy driven flow or energy and momentum coupled as velocity yes 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 so now in your uh, cfd formulation like you might have to specify something as constant uh, thermophysical properties or like something like incompressible flow constant density flow now if you are taking air and if you know that the temperature distribution degrees and let's say you are heating till 220 in that case you cannot assume air to be now incompressible it is no longer a constant density system because the variation in density will eventually change the velocity pattern and eventually that is going to affect the distribution and so that means if you are doing uh, systems where there is a change in density then it is to be accounted coupled other the other question is some for you the best book i would always suggest is the book uh, if you are a mechanical engineer you should be very proud of a book called suhas patankar uh, he is an indian now uh, i mean he is an indian studied in college of engineering uh, pune and then eventually now i think he is in wisconsin for a long time he has written one of the finest book on heat transfer and cfd so read the book of patankar uh, Uh, so are we done uh, uh, okay so i hope uh, we can close uh, this talk session uh, now and uh, proceed to the next one uh, i would like to thank uh, professor narin a lot thanks a bunch sir this was a very interactive and uh, informative session yeah thank you thank you madam thank you sir thank you for joining yeah thank you